When rendering a 3D scene using rasterization, we're going to want to optimize the scene as much as possible before spending our valuable computational resources rendering out the pixel colors of the final image. Uh, so back in our lecture on the clipping stage of the rasterization process, uh, we saw one way of optimizing the scene, uh, which we refer to as clipping, right? So, uh, you know, to, to be formal, uh, we would call this view frustum culling, which, uh, well, as the name suggests, uh, was an attempt at basically uh, removing geometry or not, not trying to render geometry which lies outside of the, the view frustum itself, right? Because, well, if we can't, if we can't see that geometry uh, from the camera, if it's not inside the camera's field of view, then we uh, shouldn't bother attempting to render it. And we saw that the general idea of view frustum culling, or, or clipping as we called it in that lecture, uh, kind, of, kind of looks a bit like this, right? If we imagine this truncated pyramid uh, to be the, uh, the, frustum, the, the view frustum itself, and if uh, we had maybe a piece of geometry, well, first of all, if the, if the geometry was completely outside the view frustum, we could just ignore it altogether. We don't need to consider that geometry at all. But if it uh, intersected uh, one or more of the planes of the view frustum, then what we do is, uh, right, we'd go ahead and insert vertices along each edge of the intersecting geometry and uh, just make it such that we could actually discard the geometry outside of the view volume, but still leave us uh, with the portion that was still inside the volume, right? Because we still would want to be able to render that and have it be like a complete solid object that, that we can actually render. All right, so that is uh, view frustum culling and uh, you know definitely a great way of optimizing the scene. But uh, there's another simple and, and commonly used uh, opt uh, optimization method as well, which we can take a look at. And that is called backface culling, which uh, is, is pretty simple and uh, just allows us to ignore any polygon which is facing away from the camera, right? Since, uh, well, in, in most cases, those polygons are simply not going to be visible. They're not going to contribute anything to the final image. Uh, and, uh, and we might as well not uh, be, you know, uh, trying to solve the visibility problem on those polygons. You know, it, it would be pointless, right? Since we're not going to see them anyway. So we can uh, think about what this means just for a second here. Let's uh, take this. Let's take this polygon, for example. Um, well, uh, right now, with it, is it pointing towards or away from the camera? Obviously, it's pointing towards the camera. So uh, we would keep this polygon. But if it was on the other side of the of the sphere, well, now it's pointing away from the camera. And uh, uh, because of that fact, uh, if we're using uh, backface culling, we could simply not consider it as part of the rendering process. Um, now, let's let's see this in action. If we if we have this object selected and in Maya, if we head over to the display menu under polygons, we can actually turn on backface culling for individual objects, but we're not going to see any effect on a solid piece of geometry. And that's actually good, right? Because as I was just saying, um, we, we don't want backface culling to cause any errors, right? Uh, we, we only want it to be removing geometry we don't end up seeing anyway. So, I mean, the reason this works as an optimization method is because, well, usually we're working with uh, solid body objects like this, things that are not, you know, things that we can't like see through or, or, or something like that. All right, so the only way uh, backface culling could cause some issues uh, or, or, in other words, the way to actually see its effect is to go ahead and delete some, uh, some polygons here so that we can actually see the inside of the object, right? Usually this constitutes a geometry error. We usually don't do this uh, when rendering 3D objects, 
but this shows the effect. Again, we can go back to the display menu, turn off back face culling, right? So there's the backside of these polygons. Let's go ahead, turn it back on and see how uh, by, well, culling them from the rendering algorithm, we simply don't consider them in the rendering process and, and therefore don't render them, right? So they're completely invisible and we can see through uh, the, uh, the, the backside of these polygons. And generally speaking, this optimization should roughly have the amount of uh, polygons uh, for which uh, we well, need to solve the visibility problem uh, during the rasterization process.